Now, every time I go out on the GS, one of the thoughts that crosses my mind, and actually when I go out on any of the older bikes, is just how simple they are relative to some of the modern bikes, even to like my R1, which isn't even a super modern bike. These bikes, air-cooled, <laughs> there's no radiators, there's no water pump, there's no fairings to remove, there's nothing. And hey, if you want to watch this in 4K, just adjust your device. So like it does many times during this part of the year, we wake up, it's still drizzling a little bit. It's supposed to stop about an hour from now. So what I'm going to do is just have an extra cup of coffee and wait this out, move the bikes around, because this afternoon is supposed to be nice. And to be honest, this time of year, I want to get every possible ride I can. Everything is still wet here, but we're going to wait this out. This time of year, <laughs> this is what we put up. Now it has the look that the roads are going to be dry in an hour or so. And of course, the, the coffee makes that happen a lot faster. There you can see the driveway is still wet here, but it, by the time I get suited up and take care of the things we have to do around the house here, a couple things, we'll be ready to ride. And, and again, this time of year is so special because a lot of people put the bike away at the end of the summer. They don't get to ride until uh, oh, seven, eight months or whatever. I don't have that issue to deal with. Now, I always like whenever I have two bikes out in the driveway, or three sometimes, I got to move them around. I like to look them over and just be thankful that I have this humble collection that I have. It suits my riding needs perfectly. And I like to ride the bike when it's clean with a coat of wax and just, just me and just the way I've always been, always. So I got the bike pre-flighted, cleaned up, ready to go. And all we're waiting for now is for the weathermen to Give us a little uh, assurance that the sun might come out. You never know this time of year. Anyway, once that happens, an extra cup of coffee and we're on the open road. picture off to the left where the train is there's a cement covered mountain I've put that on the video they were working on this intersection of 3 and 46 for seven years but look at the car in front of me now check this out this really is unusual it's a it's about 45 degrees this guy's riding along with uh, I, I assume a ordinary jacket on I gave him the thumbs up but then it reminded me when Dale was over the house and we made the video about his truck that uh, it's a 51 Ford there's no heater so when he came to see me on a really cold day he was wearing his electric jacket that he wears motorcycle riding so I wonder if this guy I don't think there's a heater in that car I wonder if he had a motorcycle jacket on I didn't get a chance to look but that's a macho guy riding around in that thing when it's 45 degrees that was pretty cool today one of the things I think of all the bikes in my collection the historically registered bikes I have four of them they the one thing they share is they're kind of simple relative to the modern bike a lot less electronics no safety features at all and what one of the side benefits of that is when a bike is simple like that you can really work on it yourself most of the time Now an example of that is when I've done work on the R1 and I've taken it apart to put the starter in, I looked at how many electronic things and how many sensors and how many things there are just relating to the fuel injection. The thickness of the manual, the manual is like a telephone book. GS, not so thick. Not so many things that can go bad other than the obvious stuff that wears out from time to time. And luckily, because I have a spare, a parts bike, I've been able to do 99% of the maintenance myself. And when I've needed an extra hand or so, Luciano has always been available and helpful and 
He knows, of course, a lot more about, especially the electronics on a bike than I do. Now, simplicity too is real nice. And for another reason, I've had to put a clutch in this bike I'm not many years ago. And I remember it was a relatively simple, straightforward, a few hour job. It was not a big deal at all. And parts were readily available. So it's wonderful when you have a brand new bike and it's under warranty. That's a real good feeling. I've had that for, and had it on the MT-09, the R1, among others. And, and that's real nice. But what happens when that warranty runs out? There's a period of time from when the warranty runs out to where it starts to need some minor maintenance. And when a bike is hard to work on, and, and boy, it can be very intimidating to take all the fairings off and all, take the radiator off, all the stuff to adjust the valves, it can be intimidating. When this bike needs a example of valve adjustment, there's nothing, nothing sexy, nothing exotic to do. You don't need a, a lot of special tools. There is a tool you can buy that makes it a little easier, but you can do it without it. And it's relatively straightforward. No shims. The cams don't have to come out. Relatively, relatively easy. Just another advantage of having a simple motorcycle instead of a complex one. I recently put in a battery and not long after that, I put a brand new rebuilt, well, I rebuilt it myself, starter. And both of those jobs, relatively straightforward, no, uh, nothing exotic. When I had to put a starter in the R1, it was a four day job for me. And I, without the manual, I wouldn't have even have tried it. But luckily I got, the, the manual for the R1 is a, a phone book, and it was a big job. I didn't want to screw it up. I made a video on it. The video's out there, the video of doing the starter replacement on this bike. What a difference when a bike is simple or a bike is complex. And at my age, and I, I just think simple is good. But again, some of the more complex, high-performance bikes need a lot more maintenance. And if you have to pay somebody, you better have a nice deep pockets. But when a bike is like this and very simple and you ride it reasonably, it, it, it needs very, very little maintenance and you can do it almost all yourself. The one thing about this bike that is not really as good as it should be to get to the battery, you've got to take the seat and the air filter off. And I wish there was a little bit easier way to do that, but there isn't. But when you have a historic bike, 42 years old, 78,000 plus miles on it, and you can do the maintenance yourself, and this bike shows no sign of giving up, I'm sure this bike for sure is going to outlive me. It's amazing how quick this day went by. It was a beautiful fall day. Look at it. Everything's covered with leaves. We still have some leaves on the tree, but they're, they're disappearing less and less every day. But every day we get out, it's just great. And my saying is always, any day I can ride, I want to ride. The exercise, it, it tends to help me stay in shape a little bit. And I enjoy the fresh air. Anna, I enjoy the GS1100E. Just another really beautiful fall day. Nice and cool. I say cool. Some people say cold. Some people really don't even like to ride in this temperature. But that, that area between 50 and 40, and if you have good winter gear, it's fine. But I, I understand if you don't, <laughs> it can be a challenge. Anyway, hope you did enjoy coming along on a ride. 
even if you're home drinking some nice hot coffee or something, but it's always great to get out on the open road. And I have said many times, a GS1100E has so many good qualities, comfort, good mileage, reliability, but one of them is the simplicity. And guys, thanks so much for watching.